Are you ready to enlist in my army? I know you are, because we're going to war, soldier. And our enemy is this yellow spongy guy. By Bloom's honor, I swear we will conquer every Nickelodeon kingdom. And that's kind of the name of today's game. Tower defense is a popular genre of gaming. They mostly involve either sending your troops to attack an enemy or setting up structures to defend your territory. I think my first experience with a tower defense game came in the form of the Balloon series, but to be honest, it's a genre I've generally steered away from. Not because I don't like it, but because it always seems a little too complicated for my pint-sized brain to understand. You have to know what soldiers to use and when, what towers to place, when to upgrade, what upgrades to buy, what to do in specific circumstances, and so on. It seems there are many mini-strategies you have to get a grasp on if you want to browse the tower defense genre as a whole. It can be a lot to take in, so someone like me is better off playing games where you just mash buttons repeatedly. But one of the most frequently requested games I've gotten is Nick Kingdoms, a Nickelodeon tower defense game. Predictably, I was a little scared to try it out. I imagined it would be like forcing myself to do long division. The results would be comical. Just when the thought of having to use my brain nearly scared me away, I noticed something that drew me back in. That's right, there are Winx Club characters in this. And as we all know, I must heed the call of the Winx. I can't just walk away and let Bloom down. Look at that face. Nick Kingdoms was created as a Flash game on the Nickelodeon website in 2014. With this in mind, take a random guess at who you think the developer is. Is it A. Workin' Man, B. Workin' Man, C. Workin' Man, or D. MP Game Studio, but later taken over by Workin' Man. If you answered A, B, or C, you'd be, yeah, it's Workin' Man. We need to do a Sarbakin game next video just to shake things up. So at the beginning, we're given a choice between six different shows. SpongeBob SquarePants, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Sanjay and Craig, The Breadwinners, Power Rangers, and The Winx Club. You know who I have to choose. I'm so sorry, SpongeBob, but it's the law. Once you choose a side, you see a breakdown of your units and towers. The roles are the same for each show, but check out how many units the Power Rangers have. Don't let their numbers intimidate you. They don't stand a chance against our magic. Then we're treated to the story. This world is divided into kingdoms, and each kingdom has its own relic. All six can be combined at the Temple of Tremendous Tendency, so you have to conquer all kingdoms to retrieve them. This game mostly prioritizes playing offensively, but you do have your share of defensive stages as well. We move through the kingdoms on a world map, but we start with our own. This is both our tutorial and our opening stage. The main character from the show tells us what to do. We set up walls to keep invaders out, then we place towers that have attackers on top of them. Then when the enemies roll in to take our relic, our tower fairies obliterate them. We're up against the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so just watch these fairies destroy these turts. You can upgrade towers during combat to do more damage or withstand attacks depending on what they do. You can also sell them, but I don't usually use this feature. The barracks will send soldiers out to fight for you, while the shooter and pulse towers will blast your enemies away. While defending, you have to take out all the enemy soldiers before they reach your relic. They want to destroy it, which is kind of strange since I thought they wanted to steal it. The first stage is easy, even if you don't upgrade anything. When you beat it, you get a code for a game called Power Pack. That might be a game for another video. You also unlock a few different options. We can now invade the Kingdom of the Turtles, but we also have a shop where we can buy upgrades with stars we get from battles. During battles, you use coins to upgrade, but stars are your currency outside of combat. For my own strategy, I mostly bought things that helped me offensively more than defensively. I thought it best to have different soldiers available right away so I wouldn't have to buy them during combat. I also focused on raising their health. It's also good to buy the starting money. Having extra coins at the start of battle can make all the difference. So now let's go attack some turtles. You can choose a path at the bottom of the screen, though I found that usually the starting one is the most sensible to stick with. You have five different units, most of which you have to unlock. Standard troopers, knights that can take a ton of hits, ninjas that can go behind walls and destroy them from the other side, mechanics that can disable towers, and the hero who is just a tank. We have Bloom because she's the main character. Enemy towers can sometimes resemble things from their show. There are these sewers that the turtles use to splash you with ooze. For now, it helps to just send in a ton of troopers and ninjas. Maybe throw Bloom in there for good measure. Look at her go, taking those hits like a champ. After you beat the first round, you have the choice to either continue your conquest or to go back and defend your kingdom. If you clear all four stages, you never have to defend again. You'll just unlock every enemy kingdom as you reach them. It's actually kinda easy. Just keep putting buildings everywhere and upgrade when necessary. Every kingdom is four stages, so once you clear one, it's on to the next. 
The difficulty can fluctuate between stages, but it's easy to get the hang of it. So you mean, I'm actually doing good in a tower defense game? I don't believe it. So now let's take down my childhood icon. You know, it is kind of funny that this whole game is about utterly destroying your favorite cartoons. We need more games like that. For the second kingdom, my strategy is to send my knights first, followed by my troopers and ninjas. I only send my hero after I clear a path. That way she can take the hits on the way to the relic. I send her out earlier if I'm desperate, but that's rare because I am absolutely killing it. I never knew tower defense games could be this much fun. I'm leading my Winx army to victory over Bikini Bottom. What's not to love? The combat screen also gives you the option to fast forward so you don't have to wait so long. This is a great feature because it can really keep a battle from feeling repetitive. You can also zoom in and out, but I prefer to stay zoomed out since I can see more of the map that way. Now here we are on SpongeBob's final map. Are we ready for the fiercest battle of our lives? Let us ride into war in the name of Althea. Well, that was easy. Now let's take on the Rangers. Listen to this awesome spin on their theme song. Working Man never held back with its background music. Now this was the first kingdom that actually made me a little nervous. I mean, most of us would be nervous about having to fight the Power Rangers. They're really tough, but we are the Winks. They're no match for our fairy power. Just like the Turtles and Spongebob before them, the Power Rangers fell by our hands. But with this victory, we accidentally scared Gold Ranger and Xandroid away from Super Brawl 3. We won, but at what cost? Next up, we're going against the breadwinners. I hope you're all ready to win some bread. They're gonna be toast winners when we're through with them. But Juice and Swaggity Swoo stand no chance against us. Why do they even bother... Rying. I love how colorful their map is. It looks so welcoming. But we aren't here to loaf around. We know what wheat came for. I actually sailed through the breadwinners and made my way to Sanjay and Craig. I found them a lot tougher than the breadwinners, especially because their last minute defense for the relic really caught me by surprise. But only really their first stage gave me a hard time. They weren't too bad after that. So once we beat Sanjay and Craig, and their old friend Weak Lips, we win the game. For the final cutscene, we bring the relics together at the Temple of Tremendous Tendency, then Jorgen Von Strangle from the Fairly Odd Parents jumps in to yell at us. He says Timmy Turner wished for an amazing dream adventure, but he's asleep and Crocker has captured his fairy godparents. Jorgen says the relics needed to be united to save them, but since we destroyed all the kingdoms, the fairies are doomed. So he sends you back in time to the start of the game and traps us in an eternal time loop. Will I get cool TV powers too? And that concludes Nickelodeon Kingdoms. So... This game is awesome. This might be one of the best Nickelodeon Flash games I've ever played. You really get into it, and it's so cool to go to war with all your favorite cartoon characters. I don't actually have many criticisms for it. The difficulty is there, but never too much to handle. It makes good use of each world and even throws the Fairly Odd Parents in there. The currency system is also really well balanced. You generally make enough money to spend if you're smart about it, and it's easy to earn money back so you don't have to worry about wasting it on something useless. This is an incredible game, and I'm very glad we gave it a try. Thanks for recommending it. I'm keeping track of what recommendations I get, so don't be afraid to throw one in if you want me to check it out. You all have shown me that you have very good taste in games. Now I finally understand just how addicting tower defense games can be. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.